Hello, hello. We are live with Orphans of the American Dream, our new post-apocalyptic campaign here on the channel. I'm really excited because I'm a player this time. And as a player, I will go ahead and just uh, pass it over to Connor and he'll tell us what we're going to be doing today. I can't believe you you went live faster than you've ever gone live before in your entire life. And I was literally putting on a sweater as, as we went live. That is the best thing ever. Uh, yeah, so... Um, this is Orphans of the American Dream, and uh, I want to pick up with a little bit of a flashback, a little, a little story here, and then we will jump into our current day situation. All right, so we get, we get, our, we get our opening credits, right? Or, uh, um, Can you describe the opening credit sequence to us? Oh, yeah. What, what's um, it like? Uh, it says, produced by these people, um, Dragon Lords Gaming Group, a uh, 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 Dragon Lords Gaming Group production, whatever, whatever you want to say. Um, a, ta- a Tailbearers Network. A Tailbearers, yeah, Tailbearers Network production. And then we open up and we see a light haired man step into his house and hang up his duffel bag along with his coat, forcing a smile. The camera pans to see a small boy on the couch wrapped in a blanket, curled up with his mother. Heroic music and comical bangs and pows are coming from the TV. And the father greets his wife and child and picks up his boy with delight as he runs into his arms. Daddy! The wife smiles and says, he's been waiting all day for you to come home because he was promised a bedtime story. The father smiles, exhausted, and says, Go on upstairs and get ready for bed. I will be up in five minutes to read to you. Okay, Charlie? (laughs) Okay, Daddy! And he runs upstairs. The man's smile quickly dissipates into exhaustion, and the wife gives him a worried look. Honey, I really think... And the husband cuts her off. My decision is final. I don't have time for luxuries right now. Not when there is... Well, why not just take us with you instead of just abandoning your family? If not a vacation, then just let us be close to you again. Let your son love you enough. The man walks over to the stairs and pauses. Please have dinner finished by the time I come back down. I want to enjoy a quiet night with you, Liz. The wife walks over and turns off the TV. Do you know why he watches this movie every day? The man looks down. He didn't even know that the boy had watched the movie at all. Charlie watches it every day and says, Do you think daddy has superpowers? Is that why he's never home? Your son thinks the world of you. And so he tries to come up with any and every reason as to why you don't want to be his father. Because the truth would hurt too much. And the truth. The truth did hurt, didn't it? And he knew the truth. I do want to be his father. And I am his father. People try when they want something. You want power, not us. And they stand silently for what seems like forever. And then the man finally speaks again. I've decided to take you both with me on my trip. I don't know when we'll we'll be able to come home, but you may come along if you like. If you still want to be around me, that is. Just please believe me when I say, I have a reason for what I am doing. I asked you to trust me. Please, honor my request. Stay by my side. And he turns and looks her in the eye. I don't want to lose you. Believe me when I say that. I don't want to do what I'm doing. Forgive me. And the wife doesn't know what to say. Please have dinner ready when I come back down. And he hesitates, but eventually walks up the stairs. And he finds his son laying on top of the comforters, ready for a story. He tells him one about a hero. Just a generic story. No big twists or memorable moments. Just like every other superhero story, where the hero is able to be so 
honorable because he is powerful enough to beat the bad guys and save everyone. He envied that power and he knew he would never live to be the hero that his son believed he was. And if he ever learned about the man he really was. He finished his story and tucked in his son for the last time. He stroked his son's forehead with his hand and smiled, then frowned and felt his son's head. Here, Charlie. You have a bit of a fever. Can you swallow this for me? This will help you sleep. He pulls out a, a, a pulls a pill out of his pocket and brings Charlie a cup of water from the bathroom sink. Charlie swallows it without complaint, and the man kisses his son's forehead, fighting tears he hadn't realized were there. Then, one sentence tears through his act and breaks him. Daddy, are you a hero? No. Well, you can't be a bad guy. You're daddy, so you must be a hero. Do you know what being a hero is really all about? This really gets the son to perk up and listen closely. Being a hero is about bringing justice to the bad guys. And sometimes, the good guys can't win without sacrifice. The superheroes on TV are more powerful than real heroes. Real heroes can't protect everyone and still get the bad guys. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, in order to bring justice... The good guys have to lose, too. Sometimes in order to do the right thing, everyone has to suffer. Daddy, that sounds like something a bad guy would say. Why would a hero ever want the good guys to hurt? His eyes were closed now. It was starting to take its effect. Oh, if only he shared in the innocence and naivety of his son. But I just know too much. And a tear falls on his son's face. His pulse was fading. I love you, son. I love you. And we hear in the, like the soundtrack, we hear his heartbeat beating slower and slower. And then finally it just stops. And the father gets up and he heads downstairs. And he walks in the kitchen, hoping to see his wife finishing dinner, but she wasn't there. And he frowns as he hears typing from his office. And his whole world comes crashing down again as he opens the door to his office to find his wife reading from his work laptop, his open duffel bag on the chair beside her. She turns wide-eyed and pale. I wanted to have just one last night of just normal with my family just one last night and he pulls the gun out from the holster in his leg she screams and the camera cuts to the window outside to see a red spray against the curtain and her shadow slump to the ground after standing there for what seems like forever he walks over and sits down in front of his laptop opens a new message and types out two words do it Okay, so now we zoom out, and the World War Z theme song starts playing, Dang. and we fast forward over the last 11 years. We hear normal news broadcasts and hear happy voices at first, and then we start to hear panic and screaming, and then we see the nukes go off. All of them, all over the world, and the broadcasts slowly fail into... Just one radio broadcast start uh, until we just hear one last radio broadcast as all the lights go out. Is anyone out there? We're all alone. Please, Mayday, Mayday, if you can spare anything, anything at all. My family is with me and I, I don't want to die. Please. Help. And then that too fades out. And we see the last nuke go off in Bloomington. And then the the globe slowly stops spinning. And we zoom yeah. <laughs> and we zoom in to see a bus driving. 
on on a lone road and i think idaho is where you guys are or is it nebraska it's nebraska okay yeah in nebraska and uh on the on the camera we can see uh that there's a burning car ahead of the road but you guys don't see that yet so i wanted to open it up with you guys that if there is anything that you guys wanted to like talk amongst yourselves or anything like that before we got into see what happens or like uh, before we get into the action I, I guess you could say otherwise we'll just go for it i wasn't sure if you guys wanted to have any type of interaction beforehand i don't want to throw we, you into something we, uh, and then not have you can we kill that guy <laughs> i think he died <laughs> <laughs> too late uh, i mean i don't I think it maybe makes more sense and obviously everybody else can have their opinion too, but like, I think it makes more sense like that we start in media res because that will probably help us get into the characters again, rather than having to like, be like, well, I want to have a conversation with uh, Jared about uh, the end of the world. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, philosophy. Yeah. I just, I didn't want to, cause I, I like, I prepared that it was going to be a combat. So if anybody was like, well, I want to prepare blah, 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 or anything like that, I want to, Maybe Josh wants to make some armor. I mean, it would seem prudent for on um, travels for that. me to have an improvised set of armor available because, you know, not that I have this premonition that there's a combat coming up or anything, but uh, <laughs> I feel like it makes sense that we start with Josh tinkering with some armor. Like they zoom up funny. to the window and all of a sudden the window comes out of the bus and you're like, all right, let's put this on my back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I necessarily want to jump into dialogue at the moment because I've oh, every iteration of this character has been different. And I don't actually know who this character is yet. Yeah, okay. All right. So uh, if you wanted to make like a create an advantage role i guess with tinkering because i feel like that's more of your character um whereas like david and jared their main plus four skill is shoot and fight so i want to like if if it helps that you the other two of you don't feel as like right like, I see outside yeah. of combat or yeah. like not as uh, important in combat if you want to make that role now mm. we certainly can yeah yeah i think that's what I will do. Um, so it, Josh is that, in the bus tinkering with some collection of random bits of stuff that he's gathered to make some kind of defensive armor. Uh, I'm going to use my stunt impro vestments, which is plus two to create an advantage when using crafts to make armor. Um, Anything you want from me specifically? Like, I, I don't remember how fate works. Do I have to call for a knob? Nope. Uh, just, uh, I, think, I guess, what are you trying yes. to make? Typically, um, they would, you would say difficulty. difficulty right, because this is an open ended. Right. Uh, I'm trying to create, trying to create some kind of, some kind of defensive vest. Or, I mean, I guess this is open ended because if he gets an eight, this defensive vest is a lot better than uh, a plus no, but, no, but, but, yeah. but that's the thing is uh, you have to set a uh, difficulty because um, succeeding with style is an option, right? And right. that is dependent be. upon difficulty. So how good he does is dependent upon the difficulty specifically. Okay, all right. So um, I would personally, I would make the difficulty based on the circumstances and materials. So if he has a lot of stuff to work with, it would be easier and if he's not being shot at it would be easier uh, that would be kind of how i would think about it personally um but that's just me i don't know so i think i'll it's make it a you. plus three okay or, well you mean a three so he has to get a three yeah a three oh, yeah. to succeed or is it a four no a three, three uh, right? so three is um like minor success um right, so yeah. here you know yeah, let's yeah. let's That's let's right. run through this real quick actually right let this is probably a good time to actually run through like legit like how do the roles work mm -hmm. um so actions and outcomes let's see uh you choose the character skill that is appropriate to the action you roll four fate dice we're gonna use the cards instead you have them together add your skill rating to the dice roll um 
And then if you invoke an aspect, add plus two to your result or reroll the dice, obviously. Um, and then you set the the opposition. Um, fail is you roll lower than the opposition. Tie is you roll the same as your opposition. So uh, this means you get what you want, but at a minor cost or you get a lesser version of what you wanted. Uh, if you succeed normally, you get get what you want at no cost. If you succeed with style, which means you get three or above your, your difficulty, um, you get what you want, but also get an added benefit on top of that. So. That is the situation there. So if Josh wants to make that, you know, pull a card and add his craft to it and pl then plus two for your stunt, obviously, um, we can obviously you have to make you get used to the difficulty of three. So yes. it will be based on that. So, yep. Whenever you're ready. I am muted. Little blue deck in the corner. Click draw. Yeah, so you you just draw from the back of the the deck where that card kind of like pops up, okay. and you drag it onto the screen. Yeah. All right. Drawing one card. So, and succeeding with style means right, it has one a, free invoke. Uh, I think just succeeding is it depends one. on but it, it depends, de it depends on, the on the on the action type. So he's he's doing okay. creative advantage here. So let's see, you get a plus one. Uh, so that's all. The, what's your craft? Can whoever's moving that please stop? That's incredibly distracting. <laughs> uh, my, craft craft is a plus, my craft is a plus four. Um, Impro vestments is an additional plus two, making the entire roll a plus seven. So that is certainly a succeeding with style. Yep. Yes. For sure. Four over the obstacle. Uh, so let's look at creating an advantage, shall we? We're obviously going to take a little bit to get familiar once more with, with fate and how it works. Uh, let's see here. Uh, use the create an advantage action to make a situation aspect that gives you a benefit or to claim a benefit from any aspect you have access to. So in theory, I guess this would be like him creating an aspect on himself with, you know, like a piece of gear, basically, right? Um, that he could have access to, which means... Succeeding with style is you get a situation aspect with two free invocations instead of one. Okay, that's what it was. Yep. Okay, so uh, Josh, did you want to name your aspect or just armored Josh? Um, normally, this is my favorite part of fate, and I don't have anything clever coming to mind <laughs> because I spent all of my clever on the uh, stunt names that I wrote up. So uh, That's fair. They're pretty clever. Um, you know. Uh, so let's... improvised armor is good enough. Yeah, I mean it, it tells us what it is. Okay, so then do we want to put that under Josh over here? Uh, yeah, I was just gonna start writing in those. Okay. Uh, each of our our stunts or not stunts uh, aspects. So I will I will go ahead and put in Josh's right now. But you guys continue going with whatever's going on and all okay. in the background. All right, so um, so I guess uh, the bus just is driving, and you guys kind of turn a corner, and there is just a burning car in the middle of the road. And uh, the driver, one of Connor's crew, just like slams on the brakes, and is just like, uh, "Guys!" <laughs> and um, so you like you guys like come up to it, so uh, there's not enough time to like break before the car as you're coming around the corner. So you guys are like right up against it. Um, and you guys like look out the windows and something catches your eye. Uh, a bunch of like, like, like guys with that are like shirtless and have like face paint on or like mud, like, in in like uh patterns on their body um in some in some places uh, like uh you you think it's like blood that's like coming off of them and stuff like that or like in their mouth or whatever and they all just kind of like rise up out of the ground and they just kind of like start walking over to the bus and what do you do they, and they have, they have like say? yeah they have like like knives and daggers and uh that kind of a thing. And they're just like out? Uh, clubs or whatever. Yep. Okay. And they're, they're, they're like start walking towards the um, bus. 
do okay. these windows open? I'd assume so. Yeah. Okay. I mean, is this like a legit like school bus or is this like what kind of bus actually is this? Like a municipal bus or what? Probably a municipal bus. I can't remember like a, what like we a city bus? decided before, but now that doesn't matter. So it yeah, why don't we do a city bus? Okay. Uh, do city bus? Uh, yeah. I mean, windows open. Bit- you should be able to. There's probably yeah, sure. certain ones that maybe don't open as easier, but there are definitely some that are like have emergency open powers, I'm sure. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I probably look to to David and Jared. We're probably all sitting more, more, ne- more or less nearish to each other. And I just kind of look at you and I'll probably look at you, David, and raise an eyebrow like, okay, interesting. I wonder what this is going to bring us. Uh, I mean, I'm not really worried out. because I have David and Jared. <laughs> uh, they uh, definitely like are threatening. Uh, okay. like like okay. they are trying to be threatening. Well, Connor, would you like to demonstrate how compelling works? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> David, I I'll give you a fate point if uh you just open fire on these people without asking any questions. What what aspect do you want to compel me to do that with? Since I uh, your your trouble, I forget. A dead man can't kill me. A dead yeah. man can't kill me. Seems like it works for me. I'll take it. <laughs> uh, and then the cool. p- p- person with the highest athletics goes first. Correct. It's notice, I think, actually. Oh, it's notice. So let's. I mean, are we are we making this like legit fight? Is that what's happening here? Uh, no, I guess not necessarily because. I just compelled David to just open fire. So we'll yeah, let him whatever I do, we'll probably first. start the combat and then we'll probably That's drop into doing this shit. Okay. Um, cool. Well, I'm going to make a, I'm going to just open fire, but I'm not going to aim at anyone specific. I'm just going to try and get them all to, oh, I'm no. just going to try and ward them is, away from the That is not consistent door. with the, uh, with the compel. Well, no, the reason Dead I'm doing man. that is because I get more bonuses if they're, if I have an advantage to use when I kill them, that's the reason I'm going to shoot. Oh. Them. First, I'm going to make them hide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. I mean, I can just attack one if you want, but it's just more efficient for me if I don't actually hit them first. Well, I think, no, you know, and it's more fun to think if I shoot at them because I was the compel. So I'll go with that. Yeah, I think, I think, um, yeah, I was going to say, I think it's more, uh, Consistent with your character to just open fire on them and to mm-hmm. just start take yep. picking people off. That's fair. Okay, so I will. I'll let somebody else create the advantage in them. So, I say there's probably like probably like a dozen. Um, so I'll just aim at whoever's closest to the door, since that's their way in primarily. Um, okay, I assume. Uh, and I have. Let's see. You know, only benefiting from this at the moment. Um, so I'll make a shoot roll. Yeah, that's how that works. All right. Also, I'll grab myself a, let me, do I just grab him off of this thing? How does that, how's that going to work? No, I don't take what it do from you? Connor. How oh yeah. So I, I, I generate one for you, I suppose. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. Well, I mean, you can just draw it from the, from the fate pile. I don't have the option oh. to do that. So. Oh, because you're not a GM. Oh, yeah. You know what I need to do? I need to rejoin this as a player. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. what I need to do. Okay. I'm not a GM in this game. Okay, so here's my shoot roll. It gets two more because of uh, the stuff. Uh, wait, no, I'm not rolling. We're drawing cards. That's right. Cancel. Okay. All right. Draw one cards. Did do anything? Did it work? Yeah, you have to pull it out of a little tray down there and put it on the screen. Uh, yeah, zero. Okay. So uh, I rolled zero, but I get plus four from shoot. Well, so I, we, we should really keep up the cards that have already been been put on the map because it okay. that that's actually how the deck works, right? We're actually pulling cards out of the deck so that there's limited options as you pull them. Oh, which okay. is part of the randomization. Okay. Um, so I so get, then it's not completely random every time. With Jared like a, moving a it around again, it got visually cluttered. <laughs> yeah. Um, I only moved it one I, time. I, I moved it because I was trying to put my card. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. But yeah. By the um, numbers and first steps is really funny. For, <laughs> right. For what? What is it? For the situation. A, the little aspects that it puts on, on the zero. Oh, gotcha. 
Oh yeah. I mean, uh, so I get a six total to this attack. Um, so I'm going to say you put this just in the corner. kill three. Uh, they have to make a roll, right? Or unless you don't want to. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah see, defend. We're, we're, we're getting, we're getting, we're, we're getting we'll, used we'll to this get, game. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll get we'll there. Get there. I'll make an athletics roll to try and evade my gunfire. Ooh, there we go. So, um, I'm going to say, so they got a zero. So I'm going to say still six shifts over them. Yeah, so, yeah. Correctly, wait, no, that might be a different name. Never mind. Go ahead. Well, I guess it doesn't, it's not succeeding in style because it's like, it's how many shifts you're doing to well, them. And I assume, yeah, you yes. succeed with style and damage so, and attacks. Yeah. I'll I say, assume. I'll say, uh, or I think one shift kills. He, it's Isn't probably going to be like work? each extra has like a one and a two stress box. And so like three damage would kill. Right. Yeah. So nameless one. NPCs I think that's how typically it have, wait, where does it say this? Uh, it said that somewhere. Oh, here we go. Uh, for for nameless NPCs, they come in three varieties: average, fair, and good. Uh, if it's just like an average run in the mill guy, it's literally one shift is enough to take each guy out. Oh wow! That's so okay. that's so right, yeah, if, if that if that's if they're all just kind of like run of the mill mooks mooks. If there are six or less of them, they're all dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there were twelve. So I yes, you definitely right. take you you kill six of them. Wow. Okay. So, Makes sense. And um, the I mean, what does that look like? Or David, literally... did you want to describe it? Or yeah, he literally just Let's see what, what I have for equipment here. I have handguns. He literally just sticks two handguns out of the out of one of the uh, windows and just <laughs> starts gunning in their general direction until he runs out of ammo, I assume, or something. Someone's trying yeah. to steal a card from my hand. Why do you have a card in your hand? That's what I, I want. I don't. I didn't take. Oh, you know what? I did. I drew, I drew a card because I thought that's how I was supposed to. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Someone has stolen a I minus just, four I from it. me. There you go. I'm just gonna delete it. Then so it goes back in the box. Thank you for doing that. Also, I'm glad I messed that up. Or I would have gotten the minus four and not a zero. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> okay. So what happens is. Uh, they yeah so basically caleb was like what are we gonna do i just turn around and open the window and... <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, what, what weapon do you have david i have two handguns well my actual gear aspect was handguns with an s so i'm just going to assume that i have lots of handguns if that's okay <laughs> yeah i don't I, yeah i think that's yeah. fine it's fine yeah Thanks. i also have all the bullets that's another one well so. Well, all the bullets uh, no. figuratively. Yeah, all, that, yeah, yeah, you have all the all the bullets as an aspect or an extra, so it makes yeah. sense that that is a thing. But. Yeah, yeah, that's a um, thing. but I can damage that aspect, right? Uh, probably. Uh, you, I mean, you can. Yeah, when things go wrong and stuff, you can like have it's it. It's not like in my version thing. of the game where it has health, um, but you can just be like, if I fail, you can be like, you run out of bullets yeah. and you don't have that anymore or something. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, yeah, so let's say there are like six on each side, and you just open up your window and you just demolish all six of the guys on your side, and the other side, the the six guys are just like, oh, and, and, and they like chair. fall to the I'm ground sorry. and like cover their heads or like scramble away, and they are just chair. like terrified. And then like your turn. <laughs> <laughs> 19! <laughs> I'm sitting pretty on 43. <laughs> it only counts as one. It counts as one. <laughs> so I oh. jump through the emergency, like, top hatch, like, on yes. the top of the bus, and I, I jump out, and I start yelling, this is your only chance to repent and leave? And I look to the left, and I'm like, David, you need to give me a chance to give the spiel first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, and I just jump off the side and start beating up the other guys. Okay. Kind of did say that they put their hands on their head and like, were like, or no, they didn't. You just did that visually. Are they actually like surrendering or are they just cowering? They're, they're, they're cower. Like, uh, let's say like 
two of the people just like fell prone and covered their heads at the oh, sound of gunfire yeah. and right. um like the other four just kind of falling around and just like running away scrambling it back into the forest okay makes sense so jared do, do you just attack the two on the ground i uh, subdue them with my captain america-esque shields <laughs> and the, 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 the new the new captain america sense. shields not the, not the lame old right so okay. the spiky one jared i'm gonna give you a spiky. compel with your trouble especially because you're just trying to call them to repentance they can't sin if they're dead yeah <laughs> so even though they're even though they're on the ground you, you don't you don't know what these people can do I, uh, I still, you don't know if this is a, the faint i mean I, I spent all my refresh the, the, these guys look like they're at a cult so like you have that plus one refresh, Jared. Did you, did you actually yeah, spend yeah, all of them? I, I only have one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I meant by spending. Uh, okay, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just punch him in the neck with my like shieldomatic thing. <laughs> with my shieldomatic thing. I'm, I'm imagining it has kind of like at the at the point like a little like stiletto that comes out. Hey, what shield are you knife? talking about? I don't know. Have you not Captain seen the new, uh, the new, uh, whatever? Oh, Captain are you talking Falcon about, shield? uh, are you talking about Infinity War? Yeah. Like this, like the kind of, that kind of rectangular It's kind of like a, spiker, kind of like a kite little one. bit spiky. Yeah, like a kite shield that's a little bit spiky in the end. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. What? Okay. It's, it's like punchy kite shields. Yeah, the one he has in Infinity War. Yeah, go- Google. It was just Google, like, Captain America new shield or whatever. Were you, were you, you were compelling Jared with that, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, I, I yeah. punch him. Did did he get a fate point? Dude, then? that's awesome. Yes, I didn't hand it to him, but I, I forget okay. about that. So do I'm I, just making sure he gets it. You click fight, or how does that work? Uh, no, draw a card. Oh, okay. I don't and actually draw. I don't it. You get have to pull it out of the top of the deck. Hey, hey, Connor, you'll be delighted to know, I don't get a single bonus from my stunts. <laughs> <laughs> you'll come to regret that though later. Wait, wait that can't be. Oh no, you're right. You're Rather. right. I forgot. I forgot. <laughs> Yep. The best build in the game. <laughs> um, I drew a card. Where did it go? Oh, it's something. Yes, that's what I did. You don't actually oh, yeah, just go ahead and pull pull it off of you and put it on the top map. Yeah. one out of the deck. I you know how it, oh. if you hover over the deck, you see how one pops out. Oh you grab that. That's what I did the same exact thing. And okay. then Connor or Caleb had to steal the card. So I got a three total. I mean, are they even defending? They're like prone. Yeah, no. So, so they I, they would die with one shift anyway. So, yeah, you kill them. Yeah, I mean, so are they they're all dead now? Basically, yeah. Oh, there there no, were some that scrambled that back into the forest. Okay, unless Jared wants so, to chase them down. I mean, if you're gonna, you can compel me again. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm not. No, I'm not gonna. I, I, I think I probably I probably like step up to the um to the window, uh you know pop prop it open and then I say. Leave them alone, Jared. They're go- they're running. Um, that was my question. Okay. I would like right. to yeah. grab my sniper rifle and make sure they're actually running and not like like I want to I want to follow them in my scope and make sure they're running and not regrouping. Right. Uh, have knives, so I imagine they're not regrouping. But I also don't want to probably like a notice check, right, or a notice roll. I I don't think it. Yeah, it's it's not no they, they, they are just running. like disappear into the okay. forest line. Okay, now I'm gonna go yeah. out and take anything interesting or expensive off of those guys. I'm sure they don't have anything. But <laughs> okay, so in, yeah, so you shot. sitting there half naked. <laughs> yeah, so you go out and you kind of search the bodies. How about how about you do uh, an investigate roll? Sure. Yes. <laughs> I got a zero. Total. Wait, what's the difficulty? Uh, jeez, uh, I'm gonna have to make sure I remember those before I uh, tell you to roll. Uh, I think it's uh, one. <clears throat> I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and put the well, cards like kind of right in the middle here, and we can just stack them on there, just because it's it's easier for the stream to see it, like oh, okay. kind of centered than on the edge of the map. True. I think it's a one because it's not hard to loot naked dead people. Okay. Well, I got a zero, <laughs> so I fail somehow. Yep. <laughs> Well, I mean, so, it probably just means there isn't anything on him, right? Yeah. yeah well, probably. you, yeah. You, there, there's nothing on him, and you're just like, uh, there's nothing valuable here, and you yeah, just, just toss him over my shoulder, and I'm like, yeah, nah. 
does anybody else want to go and like investigate these bodies uh, I, mean, I, I would like to find yeah. out what the deal is with this burning vehicle no, okay sorry, yeah. yeah i forgot about that i want to investigate this burning vehicle yeah i think i'm gonna walk over there with josh too I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll go check it out all right i'll let, I'll let jared and jared and david clean up the mess here <laughs> so difficulty two okay um i want to know what the um basically what happened here um so in which case difficulty three overall yeah can i use my um i'd like to use my stunt trash tells tales to get plus two bonus to lore when discerning the history of a device or piece of technology oh very cool nice so he's like analyzing and saying like what happened to this vehicle to make it the way it is based on my knowledge of like yeah junk yeah just my knowledge of vehicles and stuff you know yeah, yeah. how did it come up here? already i know yeah i, I, I wrote mean, the way this he a couple of minutes pretty, ago i'm yeah. gonna i'm gonna make use of it yeah um okay so my you said the difficulty is two three three if, if it's if it's just if, it, if, if, the, if you just want to know what happened with this car it would be a two but if, if, if like what happened here, that's a three. Okay. Right. So like extrapolating from the, from the what vehicle, happened with the car to the rest of the situation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I will take that. That's fine. So let's see. Plus two from Trash Tales Tales. Uh, plus two from Lore. And I get plus one from this, making it a plus five. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So... Uh, is is it two over sixty? It's three, over, three over. So okay. he doesn't. He just succeeds regularly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, this car, um, from what you can tell, it looks like it's been it's been burned a few times. This isn't the first time that someone set fire to it. It's kind of a like, uh, very, very gone car. Uh, and it, you can, you can definitely tell that, uh, I guess you could say you can smell gasoline. This was purposefully lit and recently. Hmm. Okay. So it's like a decoy or something. So what you're telling us is we didn't kill enough of them. Okay. <laughs> and so, uh, with the plus three, I want to say that, um, one of the guys, uh, isn't all the way dead and he kind of coughs and sputters and. Um, you kind of like walk over to him and he's just like, we we're just trying to scare you. Why did you, why did you shoot us? We're just trying to protect our town. And he's just like, and I think breath. I immediately feel really guilty Cause like I think in my mind I was just assuming oh, okay just bandits like this is like normal scum of the earth and I don't care if David and Jared take them out but then I'm suddenly realizing oh crap I need to be way more discerning with situations like this and so I I kind of shake my head as almost of this like to wipe away cobwebs in my brain and like look at you Josh and I'm like I think we made a mistake and Caleb I want to <laughs> compel your trouble weight of the world on my shoulders oh, no. <laughs> you lay into uh david and jared oh, crap uh, <laughs> you know what i am i am not gonna take that compel uh, i'm gonna spend i'm gonna like spend of eight points to not have to take it simply because hand like, it over right exactly mm-hmm. so it, because i don't feel like this is their fault i feel like this is my fault right and if you want to change the compel so that's it's more about that then that's fine but if it's if it's about like taking it out on them you know, as a, a way to kind of assuage my own guilt, I'm going to like re- refuse to do that sort of a thing. Uh, you know, that makes sense. If, if, um, you can keep your fate point for now. And because because you're kind of explaining to me how your character feels how, about the situation. About, yeah. And, and like and, that aspect specifically, right? The weight of yes. the world on my soul. It's like my shoulders, right? It's like right. I take responsibility for everything, even if it's not me. Um, yeah. So I'm going to so. say um, if, if you take a fate point, um, you can't sleep tonight. Right, and so I'll have like some sort of thing tomorrow where I have like have an uh, probably get an aspect you're on me where I'm like, yeah, where you're tired, okay. exhausted yeah, for sure. That's the sort of uh, existential guilt that I love in this game. So let's That's do right. it. Oh, from okay, the build then, of your character, I couldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so Josh, how are you feeling? Um, 
I mean, I'm repulsed. Who would do such a thing to a magnificent car? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, and, no, and, but, uh, because of your role, you can tell me whatever what, whatever type of car it is, and that's the type of car it was. So, like, okay. if it's, like, a, one of your favorite cars, like, oh, yeah. I mean, it's obviously the burnt-out husk of a Tesla Cybertruck, right? <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> Like clearly somebody, somebody burnt it out, blew up the lithium battery and then poured gasoline on it repeatedly to use as some kind of bonfire beacon. You don't just do that to a Tesla Cybertruck. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm now very interested in this town though uncomfortable with the idea that we might uh we might have just made enemies with people we've never met before yeah only if they find out we did it yeah weren't there like four I mean, we people had some who of them ran off away. into yeah. the trees david yeah but they don't have a car we'll get there for them do we even know where there is sure but it won't matter unless it's on in the way which i mean it, it will be almost certainly <laughs> Why do I get the feeling this entire trip is going to be yeah. some people cleaning up the messes left behind by some Probably. people? I think we did that on do purpose. I, do I hear my failure of marksmanship out there talking? What's that? Oh, oh do you hear the dead man die. talking? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yes, would like to roll an empathy check before David shoots him. I was like, oh, I missed it. <laughs> Uh, he did. He he bled out and died, Jared. So you can do an empathy check in a different person, though. If we if uh, okay. and, and if you succeed, I can say that they're alive. Oh, I can't do an empathy check on what he said. I don't think we heard him. Oh, we heard oh, him. yeah. Okay, I get you. Let's, Go ahead. Let's double check the skill. Yeah, let's double check the skill. Just to make sure we're thinking, but right, we, we were in the vehicle anyways, right? I assume we didn't hear any of that. Oh no, I was outside. Oh, he was outside. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. I didn't hear. Because remember, he does. He does close close quarters combat, David. Remember? Yeah, but I thought he was on the other side of the truck because the side where I shot people was the other side of the truck from him. It doesn't matter. I was just confused. Uh, yeah. So skill says empathy involves knowing and being able to spot changes in a person's mood or bearing. It's basically the emotional notice skill. I mean, I so, would yeah, say I mean, being yes. shot would probably cause one of those I mean, an emotional change. <laughs> Well, I mean, specifically, it may, does make sense for Jared to be like, pick up on the nuances of like what the guy yeah. said as he died. I guess, Jared, what are you trying to what are you trying to learn if he is telling the truth about that or not? Oh, OK. So is that just draw a card? What's the difficulty, yeah. Connor? Uh, one. Uh, I got two. Yeah, so he he was he was telling the truth. Oof. Well, you, well, you have an empathy. Zero. Uh, okay. zero yeah. Did you put in your negative skills yet? Yeah, he did. Yep. Okay, good. So yeah, so he was telling the truth. So so, do you are you like oh? I mean, or how are you feeling? How, I mean, how's Jared? How's Jared feeling? How's apocalyptic Jared feeling? I mean, they're they're stupid. So. <laughs> So they got what was coming to them? Not, not exactly that, but, you know, just spilt milk. They might not have deserved yeah. it, but it was their fault. <laughs> yeah. Spilt milk. You made a mistake, but it wasn't murder. <laughs> Is that kind of how you're feeling? I mean, they did kind of come up to the yeah. bus with knives yeah, in their hands. They wanted to defend their, I mean, no, never mind. I'll leave it for a character conversation. So. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. So I, I probably, like, come back from the car situation, and as Jared is, like, you know, paying attention to what the guy said and whatnot, and I basically... I, I look pretty distraught and I probably don't say a whole lot to you, Jared, but I do say something like, um, next time we should probably talk to them a little bit before we just start shooting. I know. I didn't even get to give them my spiel. Yeah. I don't and, and then I kind of look, and, and look my, at my David spiel is you bus. get one chance to repent. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, yeah, I don't make a habit of responding to threats with a uh, polite, uh, in, uh, invitation to my, to my car. But, you know, you do you, I guess. Just let me at least say something to them next time. I'm not holding it against you. 
and it's not. And I'm like, well, hopefully next time doesn't get you killed then. Well, that'll be my fault. <laughs> yeah, you just got shit you said. <laughs> I think Connor kind of speaks up too, and he says, they did threaten us, but next time, instead of shooting him in the head, why don't you just shoot in the air? Well, that seems like a bad way of hitting somebody. Also, why are we all feeling so bad for these people all of a sudden? <laughs> well, because one of them said something along the lines of, we were just trying to protect our home. It seems like maybe this was not a bandit ambush and instead just people creating a roadblock so bandits don't get to their town. I don't know. Well, I don't believe that for a second. That's not how that works. I, I don't know what to believe. So we'll figure it out when we get there, I guess. It's up ahead, isn't it? Probably. I look at Connor. Also looks at the GM. Say that again. Ironically. I said, it, it, well, we'll probably find out when we get there. It's up ahead, isn't it? And I look at Connor. Oh, gotcha. Uh, yes. And we do need to stop for supplies. So maybe not mention that we killed these people. <laughs> Sounds like maybe we should try and beat the people who ran off into the woods, huh? Um, no. No, I mean, beat them there. Like, we're in a car. Oh, <laughs> it's, 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 I love how everyone <laughs> assumed it was, like, violently beat. So, and, and I think that's in character, too. Connor says, mm-hmm. oh, oh, yeah, okay, <laughs> let's get going. Uh, but uh, the driver kind of looks at y- you guys and is like, uh, that's a joke, right? And he, like, yeah. points to the burning car in the road. <laughs> well, I mean, is there, like, a giant tramp drop-off on the other side? Can you just go around it? Yeah, what is the road situation exactly? Yeah. This is it's like, like country road or like country highway like, sort of a thing. Yeah, but it's like it's like trees on either side of the road. Oh, got and, it. Okay. Uh, like like a ditch. So he's oh, like, I don't uh, know why. yeah, probably not a good idea. I don't know why I thought the tree line was far away. That's why I said I wanted to take my sniper rifle out. Okay, now I understand. Yeah, you know what? That is kind of what I assume too for some reason. I don't but know why. You know, and you know, I've all know the reason because we're in Nebraska. And that actually yeah. would make more sense than being in the middle of a forest. I'm yeah. not <laughs> entirely sure there is a forested road anywhere in Nebraska, but probably last time I drove I through Nebraska, that, but... the only thing that I could see was the next overpass, miles and miles ahead. Exactly. <laughs> this is the I'm only sure forest that, anybody... that exists in Nebraska. It's, it's <laughs> right here. The, the, the people could have planted it. They could have planted it here. Oh, honestly, yeah, this is, it has been 11 years. It's so, been 11 sure. years. This yeah. is the apocalypse. It turns it, out the apocalypse it, forest. It was really bad yeah. for humans, but not so bad for uh, nature, apparently. And I'm, sure. I'm sure that I'm sure that Nebraska does have a forest somewhere. Yeah. At any rate. Um, but anyway, I mean, yeah. So, like, yeah, is this sort of situation where we have to, like, push the burning car out of the way sort of a thing? Yes. Or put it out or something like that. Or, or okay, you yeah, guys could I mean, go around, I guess. I feel like we all look do. at Josh. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> Uh, well, obviously we moved the car. Any ideas on how to do that? Uh, yeah. Sorry, I nerd sniped myself looking at the (laughs) information on forests in Nebraska. (laughs) Apparently there are actually a decent number of forests in Nebraska. There you go. That's right, guys. GA made no liar. (laughs) Um. We're going hmm. south, right? We're going to Texas? Uh, oh, yeah, I was going to ask you guys about that. Um, you, from what I remember, you guys were going north. Um, so if I can pull well, what were the places? over to the hex map real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I was going to show you guys kind of the we layout. Southeast. So, <laughs> what's that? We were going southeast. In my mind, we were going due west. So, <laughs> so okay. So this is oh, where you, you guys started. Them, didn't you? This is the city you guys started. It is right at this little... Uh, Little crossroad, little crossroad there. there. Okay, so the red red square is what I assumed you guys were, but oh, I should I I, okay. I forgot that I was going to ask that earlier. Um, and then this is a nuke over here. This is a nuke over here. Okay. And then there are two nukes way down here. Oh, I see. I see. Wait, where's oh, the other one? I see the one They're all circled. They're in, all north, in between right? Albuquerque and Oklahoma City. There's, oh, that there north. are two in this one location. Oh, in oh, okay, I yes. see. Uh, well, which one's actually closer? That's probably the real question. Let's see, we've got thirty-five feet, feet that way. <laughs> uh, they're about equal, but there isn't a road. Yeah. It's probably going to be. Ooh, mm, honestly, it's going to be. Well, this is going to be a nightmare either way. <laughs> yep. 
Okay. Uh, we should go north because there isn't a nuclear fallout zone in our way. Yeah. The ruins of Norad is probably not the best place to be right now. Yeah. Because if you have probably, enough yeah. nuke to take out Norad, you have enough nuke to take out, like, the, the large area between Denver and Colorado Springs. Mm-hmm. You need to level mountains to make sure that stronghold. So is, uh, actually, that's a no thank you. Yeah, so I guess we're going north. Uh, that is a river. That I assume there is a road going that way, but it probably makes more sense if we were going um, west first, Connor, through Cheyenne. Oh, yeah, sure. That's instead fine. Of, instead of up the river, because I think that's a river. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. That makes... I Not a road. I Yeah. Because yeah. we'd probably go down the major highway, um, I assume, if it's still... Yeah, I, I, apparently possible. I thought you guys made a canoe and... Uh, yeah, if okay. If you want to do that, I can make us a tricked out <laughs> we, canoe. That's <laughs> fair. But I guess we'll get there when we get there. This canoe goes to 11. All right. Um, Why stop at 11? <laughs> okay, so... That's the point. So, yeah. So, let's say in this same hex is this city that you guys are going to stop at. Right. Sure. Um, okay. So, with that, uh, well, you guys are... Diane right there. Um, or Josh. Yeah. So, do you have an idea of how to... Hey, there's an oil well right to the southwest of us. Uh, yeah. Screw yep. this, let's go get rich. I mean <laughs> Yeah. Option for scavenging for supplies, but what was the question, Connor? Um do you have a an idea of like how you want to deal with this car? Or yeah, right. is your guys' a solution, well let's just make a drive roll and try to go around or what what's your guys' solution to the burning car on the road? Mm. Oh, and I, that was another thing I guess I wanted to ask you guys, but I forgot. Um, I want you guys to feel like the NPCs that are a part of Connor's crew are assets, um, but I they're never going to have like more than two skills. Um, so for this driver guy, I, I haven't established who he is yet. He's but good at driving. He's good at driving. So and probably fixing the bus. <laughs> right. So, but you guys don't have to use him if you guys don't want to you know what i mean i never wanted to be like well this is your driver and he has to drive i don't think any of us can drive well according to our skills Mm, so okay so he's an asset you guys can use so i have a plus one in driving but he's probably has i forgot oh no i do have a plus zero on drive i I thought i figured out driving as a skill at all so (laughs) how is the how is the like texture consistency of the ground around us is there like right like how is there there, there, like loose dirt and stuff that we could pick up with shovels fairly easily. I think so. Yeah. Cause I think we should maybe throw some, uh, throw some dirt on the fire to try to dampen it down a bit before trying to drive around it. Don't sense. want to melt the bus on our way past. Do we have to like okay, roll yeah, so, anything for that? If we're just like pitching dirt, I, mean, I want to create an advantage, right? Um, yeah, there you go. Go ahead and create an advantage. I guess you could use, what skill would that be? I mean, would that be physique? Shovel yeah. And dirt? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, either physique or athletics. Uh, let me like, I'm curious about the difference between those two actually in the skills here. Yeah. All I know is physique gives you health. I'm not even really sure what the difference is. It's like for um, physical feats of strength. It's raw strength and endurance where athletics is what's natural level gifts, of natural. physical fitness, whether through training, natural gifts or genre specific means. That sounds like you the are kind of thing your body. that gives you physical strength. I don't feel like that was a cause and effect. I, just put into two. I, mean, I think it would be physique, though, because it has it has more to do with, like, prolonged endurance and, and just, like, general monotony than yeah, it and to do with... To create an advantage with yeah, athletics, right. it's saying, when you're creating an advantage with athletics, you're jumping to high ground, running faster than yeah. the opponent to keep up with, performing dazzling acrobatic maneuvers in order to confound your foes. So, so I think, it's, it's more acrobatics than athletics in some ways, too. Interesting. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because so yeah, it's actually an physique. acrobatic skill. So that's probably why. Go ahead or, or uh, how did, Josh, how does this or you don't like, want to roll physique? I was, was going to say, yeah. who, how does this work to do multiple people? That's what I'm wondering. Uh, what yeah. do you mean? How do we do... Like, if, like if all of us wanted to help with this, I'm sure if you, you want to like help, a, you just give a plus one. I think that's a thing you can do. That's what I was thinking. Oh, that does sound correct. Just, uh, yeah. Let's look. Um, maybe just type in help and that will 
come up with something. We should probably make Jared do the work. But I want to do the work. Good, what's your character's physique? Minus three. Thanks, son. Okay, that's accelerated. I don't know. So building a tank, it seems to make sense that they would have decent physique. Um, I'm not. F so I I know it is a rule in f accelerated for sure. Um, that's a good point. But it does not. I can't find where it would be for core. Let's see. I can't find my fate core book. I can't even remember if I bought it or not. Thought I had it. Outcomes. I mean, in the meantime, Challenges. I don't mind just rolling physique. Yeah. And we can look at it between sessions or the next time help yeah. comes up. Yeah, I, I was expecting to just find it right away, but uh, I cannot. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it'd either be Josh or, or whoever has the highest physique if you wanted to go that route. But it's up to. I mean, would Jared Josh. would Jared volunteer to hoist a shovel or? I mean, yeah, and let's just say you get plus one with each for now, for each person that's sure. helping. Yeah, that makes sense. Hey, Jared. You want to come throw dirt on this fire for me? Yeah, sure. Why not? I... D does everybody just want to dig, yeah. or just? I mean, just go I and... assume so. I get two. I, I, I don't. Dig. Oh, oh, wait! I found it! I found it. Uh, when you combine skills, figure out who is the highest skill level among the participants. Each other participant who has at least a plus one in the same skill adds a plus one to the highest person's skill level, and then only the lead character rolls. Okay. Yeah. So they just let so, you metagame it. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but you have, but you to, have, have to be good at this one in it. Yeah. I have a plus one in it. I think all of us probably do at least have a plus, plus one two. in it. Okay. So you can add another plus three to your roll then, Jared. Okay. So that would be... Um, I have and I can bring us back to the other... So you should be at eight, right? You rolled this plus two, right? I rolled the minus two. Okay. Minus two? Oh. So near at four, right? Because you have three. Oh, yeah. Okay. He has three minus two to one plus three from us is four. Is that a minus two or a minus one on the screen? It's a minus one. But I think he said he pulled a minus two. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was a card behind. It was a minus one. Oh, okay. okay. That was the one you pulled and you put it right here, right? Off the side. If there's a minus two out there, that's that's what I pulled. There there isn't a minus two. It's, there was a plus two and then a minus one. Okay, so it was minus one. One. Yeah. Okay, so, so what did you say the difficulty has? Uh three. So you got a four then? No, he got a five. Yeah. He got a five. Okay. It would have been a four if he'd rolled missed. Well, succeeds. Yep. So you guys put out the fire and then um I'll just make a drive roll with um with a probably just a plus two because he's using the the advantage, right? Well, so I and he, he also I'm gonna say NPCs that are specialized in things that part of the crew just have a plus two. Oh, right. I just mean like so, an additional plus two. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we'll give this a plus four then to whatever it is. So he gets a four. So so he succeeds, he goes around, uh and you guys head on into the city. And with that, let's take our first break because I gotta Take care of some yep. real quick. I think I have to move spots to here. Do it. So All stick right. around. I'll let I'll let you take it. No, I mean if you want to do it. All right, ahead. yeah. So stick around. We'll be we'll be right back with some more orphans of the American dream, and uh, we're gonna see what happens when uh, th this this crew of uh, ruffians and hooligans um, goes into a a city, and we'll see what awaits them there. We'll also find out what happens when we get there. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back.